comments, questions? I guess I can start with when you were talking about um, abuse, and it's ironic that this is coming up because actually yesterday my family was at my grandmother's house okay. um, for a party, and one of my cousins, my female cousin, was there, and I overheard her speaking to another close family member about her husband, like being back in the church and all of that. And they're all, you know, praising God. Hallelujah, see what prayer can do and everything. It made me very irate. It made me very irate because my cousin was abused sure. uh, by this man for years. He was a drug addict. Um, he did, he raped her. Sure. He abused her. And I'm not somebody that puts up with anything like that. All I have to see is you raise your hand and, and that's it. Like, I, you know, and she sure. went back to him more than once. And it angers me because I often feel, especially in the Christian community, and this is just how I interpret it, but a lot of times the focus is always seems to be mostly on women and what women should do to make their husbands happy or to keep their men or, 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 or whatever. And I don't think enough emphasis is put on the man and his responsibility and what he's supposed to do and how he's supposed to respect women, and it just makes me very angry. I feel like a lot of Christians use prayer and forgiveness okay. to almost excuse okay. somebody's abusive behavior, and mm -hmm. I don't feel that that's right. That's, that's right. Honey, anybody who has anything to say to what she said? So I guess my question is, I mean, for me, it's a no-brainer. Like, I just don't take anything from anybody. I just want to know how far, as a Christian, how far are you supposed to go? Or how far are you supposed to be forgiving? Because I heard you say two people have to be, you know, forgiven. So when you're in a marriage, how far is that <coughs> to go as far as forgiveness before you say, okay, I can't take any more of what how you're abusing me, whether it's physically Sexually, verbally, mentally. Yeah. I mean, how much of that are you supposed to take in forgiveness before you walk away? Yeah. When you say to death do you part, I don't believe mm. that means mm. that the woman has to die in the marriage. I, I don't believe that it has to be so close to death before something's done about it. And to be quite honest, I had another friend from years ago that was in an abusive relationship, and I didn't know until... Her husband left her, and she told me she went to the pastor, and they blamed her. So you have to, yes, you need to seek help, and you need to seek professional help. Me, personally, I would say seek spiritual help, seek your pastor, and then also seek professional help, somebody that's licensed in, mm -hmm. in, in, that, in that arena. Mm -hmm. But me, personally, it only takes one time. I'm not going to, because I have too many family members that, that's been through that, and I was raised not to accept that, and I feel like no woman, no person should accept that, and especially if you have children, you don't want your children to see that, and to, and for little girls to think that that's acceptable for a man to, to do that to them, and for little boys to think that um, uh, in order for a man, quote unquote, to feel like a man, he has to use his physical power over a female. Yeah. So it doesn't take much for me. Like, uh, all you have to do is curse me out once or look at me like you're going to strike me and I'm gone. I don't like I don't put up with that. And it just hurt me so much because I'm not really all that close to my cousin. And if you were to meet her, you wouldn't think that she's the type of person that would accept abuse. But just the fact that they were it was so light and it was just made to seem like, oh, everything's okay now. It just really bothered me because I've, I've seen this woman's face messed up. I've heard the things that have happened to her. And so... Okay. Tim, you can finish what you were saying. Well, all right. all right. I believe marriage is so death to be part, but at the same time, God doesn't want us to be abused and be in there. So the first time abuse comes up, I would definitely approach a pastor or somebody right mm -hmm. away to, you know, let them know so they can sit down and have some counseling, you know, so it doesn't go any further. And uh, somebody you can have praying for you, have your church family praying for you. And if, if it comes to the point where the woman has to leave the situation for a while, I, I suggest that be an excellent idea. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just to get away, out of the house, you know, still try to do the counseling, 
but don't keep yourself in the situation where there is a chance that you could get hurt. Now, I'll say this. A marriage is supposed to be a covenant between two people until death do you part. God hates divorce. He doesn't like it because it breaks um, it, bring, it, it doesn't just break apart the ones that are involved in it, but it affects a whole lot of other people and there's a chain and there's a cycle that is created that you don't really want to get into. And that's why you all are here today. What do I mean? You are here to receive knowledge. You are here to receive instruction on how to avoid those kind of things happening to you. If you are in a relationship with someone and you're dating somebody and the guy hits you the first time and he says he's sorry, something happened and you're like, okay, I take it. And then the next time he curses you out and he comes back and he says, oh, I'm so sorry. And he manipulates you and begs you to forgive, to forgive him. And the next time he gives you a punch and he says, oh, I'm so sorry. I love you. I'm gonna, my life is going to come to an end without you. And you stay in that kind of a relationship. And you get married. And you think marriage is going to change him. You are in for hell on earth. That's why we say marriage is a choice. It's a decision that you make. You don't say, oh, I'm so in love with you. I can't help myself. I got to stay in there. No. You got choices to make. And you got to make the right choices. You got to understand who you are. You should, under no circumstances, tolerate abuse. It is not right. It is not pleasing in God's sight. You are not made to be a punching bag for anybody, either as a man or as a woman. Now, I know we've been talking about women, but I know men, I know women that beat up their men. Oh, I'll tell you that. Mm-hmm. I do know that. But it's not right for you to tolerate abuse in any way. So before you get to the point of marriage, now if I'm talking to my people, it's, it's a different case. You understand? But before you get to the point of marriage, that's why you're here. That's why you're receiving instruction. That's why you need, to do, you need to do a search. You need to do a finding out. That's why a time of dating is a time of interview. It's a time to talk. It's not a time to touch. Because the minute you start to touch and chemistry gets involved and your hormones get involved, your reason gets out the window. And then, you're, it, and then when it comes back and it says, I'm sorry, and you make up with sex, then it becomes okay. Because you can't reason anymore. You can't think straight anymore. Things go out of order. Your reasoning is, 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 is off. You're not able to see right. Even when people are talking to you, everything they seem to say doesn't matter. It doesn't count. Because your emotions have taken over your thinking. And that's why it grieves me and it hurts me when I see people being abused on a daily basis. If you're in an abusive relationship, whether you're married or you're single, you need to get out and get out now while you can leave to tell the story. I have stories of people that have died trying to tolerate abuse in the name of I'm being loyal. No. Yeah, you should forgive. I don't doubt that you should forgive. I'm not saying we shouldn't forgive. But you can't sit in an abusive relationship and say, oh, I'm, I'm being forgiven. I'm a forgiving person. So I'm going to tolerate it one more time. It just may be your last. Get out while you can. People have been in it, and they never leave to tell the story. If you're someone that abuses another person, you need to repent. You need to ask God for grace. You need help, and you need to seek help, and you need to get help. It's not right under any circumstance for you to lift up your hand to hit a man or to hit a woman who is someone that you're supposed to love and care for. And then you go back to manipulating and asking to please forgive and please forgive. And you're there in the name of saying you're receiving forgiveness.